Rahana Power. Peter Groinum. Groinum. Yeah. All right. Welcome, welcome. Thank you. Great to be here. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for coming in and chatting with us today. Uh, we're excited to have you. I am going to jump in first with a couple of random questions for sure. you. Um, so, Peter, where are some unusual places that you've been to in your life? Uh, let's see. Well, I did. Uh, I studied in Ireland in college and uh, like my sophomore year. And then the year after that, I just took a semester off and lived there. Mm-hmm. Um, so I've been kind of. Wow. Yeah, it was like, I don't know, like nine, about nine months total of time in Ireland and really like went to a lot of small towns and went to the Aran Islands, which are like the far west coast of Ireland. Mm-hmm. And it's very surreal and beautiful. And, um, you know, like maybe a lot of people have the image of like, you know, a lot of green and rain and ocean and just like kind of rugged. And that's like, that is, that is essentially it. Um, that sounds amazing. And really cool people, of course, who are just super open and conversational. And mm-hmm. yeah, I think that's. Yeah, I guess checking out like every corner of Ireland is maybe qualifies as like yeah. most interesting, I guess. But that sounds awesome. Yeah. Um, and if you were to sing karaoke, what would be your go to song? Well, I do. I do love Elton John. I do love uh, the Don't Go Breaking My Heart duet with mm-hmm. Kiki D. Uh, I've done that at parties before. Um, I also really love Regulate by Warren G. <laughs> yes. Uh, and yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I do both his and the Nate Dog parts if if, if required. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> Thank you. That is a great choice. Thank you. Um, okay. And then is do you have a random fun talent that people may or may not know about? Sure. Uh, I, I have a couple, I guess. One is um, I, I'm a very avid home cook, and I'm currently obsessed with making pasta. Ooh. So uh, a lot of homemade pasta in my wow. house. Um, I also, I was thinking about this the other day, like when I was a kid or like a teenager, I... I was convinced that I could um, listen to traffic and with my eyes closed. This is very strange. Uh, like listen to traffic with my eyes closed and like guess what kind of car was passing by based on how much wind noise it made. Mm-hmm. So like I would close my eyes and be like, that was a sedan. That was a minivan. That was an SUV. And I, this is so silly, but I like got, I actually got pretty good at like guessing correctly just based on the sound, hmm. oh, whatever, cool. whatever that means. I don't know, yeah. but that's okay. That's awesome. Thank you. That must come in handy for filmmaking or sound design. Yeah, I get you know when when I've uh, yeah when it comes time for that, I guess I do have a pretty. I hope I hope I have like a good ear for that or like right like yeah the street isn't that populated for this scene. Like, <laughs> take a few elements out. Right, but nice. nice. Well, let's jump into film here. Um, what got you started in film to begin with? Sure. Well, I uh, I studied film in college. I was always a fan growing up. My my dad had a video store, so I was one of those kids who worked at a video store and just there were some movies that I just watched over and over again because they were the ones on the TV. Um, and in college, I studied film, uh, both a like, little bit of production and film theory and film history. So when I graduated, I, I went back and forth for a few years writing fiction and writing screenplays. And then, um, yeah, for a while, I was focused on the like screenplay competition route. And um, with that idea that like to get an agent or a manager, you need to like place in one of these three national competitions and then people will pay attention to your work. And then um, I did, I was lucky enough to place in a few, like I I placed in the Nichols and the Austin Film Fest and um, ABC Disney uh, had a fellowship for a while for writers Mm -hmm. um, for both TV and film. And um, I gained some momentum momentum that way. And then a couple of years ago, I just decided to direct a few things and get more involved and, um, I mean, I directed maybe about 10 years ago, like a series of shorts that they were more just an exercise for me just to like, try to like self teach about how to like be more compact in my storytelling and how to like bring all the elements together. And then a couple of years ago, I, I was fortunate enough to do some more directing and, um, want some, like, uh, got some funding opportunities here in town and, um, wrote a short that was produced a couple of years ago. And then I wrote and directed another short last year. And, um, I mean, it's one of those things with, I think a lot of actors and, um, like fiction writers get into this too, where it's like to get more exposure for your work, you need to like have multiple avenues for getting in front of people. Um, you can't just like write stuff and send it out into the void and hope that like it comes back to you. You have to like, you know, be a little more hands on. Right. Mm -hmm. But, well, um, wow. So it sounds like you have quite a diverse uh, history with film. Um, I think so, yeah. I would say that. Especially your uh, semester in Ireland, right? Mm-hmm. So, And then you took time off to just kind of be there, right? I did, yeah. I mean, that was, you know, that was a little while ago, of course. Uh, and uh, 
I did. Yeah. My originally my, my semester off, I was like, okay, I'm going to write a series of short stories and I'm going to work in a pub and I'm going to like live that writer lifestyle. And, um, <laughs> I mean, the economy at that time was like not great in Ireland. So, um, no, no job <laughs> surfaced, but, uh, but yeah, I got a lot of writing done and you know, I mean, anytime you get, have time to write is like a, a huge gift. So mm-hmm. got to kind of take advantage of it. Hmm. Very nice. Absolutely. Um, so tell us about your work. Like what did you, what kind of projects did you start working on um, when you originally started? And then like, what was your most recent project? Sure. Uh, so I've written uh, several features that are, I mean, a few of them have gotten into the development track at different places and then kind of fizzled. Um, yeah. And I've done a few like staged readings of my work and done like table reads with actors and um trying to think uh yeah i mean i've written just a bunch of shorts and a bunch of full-length scripts over the years and my most recent project that's been produced was last year i wrote and directed a 20-minute short here in town it's kind of a comedy and a drama and it's um i'm not sure when this episode's going to air but it or drop but uh it's currently like that short is finishing up its festival circuit um so we like won a few awards in la and new york and we screened twice in new york earlier this year which is really fun to go out there and like you know, show it to a brand new audience that has like no idea who I am and, you know, just like totally, um, like new to the material. Um, and we, yeah, I got into a, a festival in Chicago this month. And, um, so it's been a really, yeah, it's been a nice like cycle with it and it's like about to wind down, but, um, you know, every, every project you do, you learn a ton. So that's great. What was the name of the short? Uh, it's called small self. Okay. Is that the one with Kendra? Yes, yes, Kendra's in it. She's great. Yeah, I heard her episode uh, the other day. She's awesome. Yeah. She's such a good actress. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. What, what was your experience working with Kendra? <laughs> uh, it was great. Um, she is so funny and smart and cool. And um, yeah, I mean, every everybody in that in that short, I think we had six or seven speaking roles and everybody, everybody approached it a little bit differently and brought a lot of energy and... Um, yeah, she was great. I mean, and everybody, I mean, everybody is so talented and also patient, which like when you're shooting, you know, like, okay, we're going to start at 9 PM. We're hoping to wrap it up in three hours. And of course it's never, you know, like, <laughs> and you know, just asking people to like give up on sleep for you, which is like an amazing yeah. ask. Mm-hmm. Um, like sleep is my favorite thing. So like <laughs> if anyone gets in the way of my yes. sleep, I get a little crabby, but, um, mm-hmm. But yeah, she's great. I I would love to work with her again. I mean, I'm definitely. I've written a few things recently that she's definitely like on my list of people to like reach out to when it's when it's time. Mm-hmm. Right. What What is the film about, just generally? Sure. So it is about a cisgendered guy who becomes pregnant, and it's. Um, I'm trying to tell it in more of a like kind of a realistic way. Like, what would that mean for? a character to have that kind of strange big thing happen to him and what would it mean for his friends? And like the, the story takes place over the course of an evening. Um, and we never really get into the mechanics of how that happened. Cause I don't, it's more of like a, like a metaphor for change in someone's life. And I don't um, like, I, 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 there's comedic elements to it, but it's not like silly. Like we never make obvious jokes, hopefully. Um, and for me it was more, I just wanted to like explore like a story of a character going through something very big and strange that like an audience would immediately understand like what the ramifications are. Um, but then the story is like what he decides to do about it. Like how does he tell his ex-wife? How does he tell his friends when he tells them, how do they react? And, um, it's just kind of like a stand in for any time something big is happening in your life. And like, how do you, how do you tell it? And like, it takes place in a, at a party and like, you know, if you're at a party with like a dozen people that you know, and people are kind of coming and going, it's really hard to like say anything serious because you keep getting interrupted and it's frustrating. And I mean, in general, I, I think like I try to write characters who have uh, hopefully like really big internal lives and they struggle to like express that. And this story just felt like a really clean way of just like, okay, here's this kind of big concept. Well, we all just have to deal with it. And now, you know, here's the story of what, like what comes next. Hmm. Cool. So do you have filmmakers um, that you've watched that have inspired you and your work? Yeah, definitely. I um, There's so many. I, I love John Sayles. Uh, he's kind of slowed down the last couple of years, I think. But he, he, like one of my favorite movies is Lone Star. From, it's like from 20 years ago. Mm-hmm. And I just love the way he brings in like giant themes and then writes characters 
and situations that like clue into those themes and express them and like his films just all feel really whole mm-hmm. um I, I love d reese's films she um she wrote and directed mudbound last year and Ooh, yeah. uh pariah a couple years ago and uh, she's just i i just really admire the way that she tells these really like intimate personal stories and there is social commentary there but it's like she just kind of gently leads the audience to that commentary and um and she just has an amazing sense of scope too which i just really admire um trying to think of other lynn shelton is a writer director in seattle i believe yeah she's pacific northwest and she writes these like really wonderful like true to life uh relationship dramas and comedies and like all of her characters feel genuine and interesting and real and like yeah i mean you just like watch one of her movies and you you feel like you know the people and there it doesn't feel like they're like straining too much you know like movies i think like they go for a stereotype of a person or they go for like like an obvious choice but like hers are very like specific and um i think some people call that like being honest or being true but and i would apply that to her as well as well as just being just like genuine Mm -hmm. great well is there anything that you love most about like making films here in minnesota Mm -hmm. sure i there's a lot of things i mean the acting talent i'm sure a lot of people on the show have have said this but like there are so many amazing talented actors who are generous with their time and because of the theater scene and um so that's yeah i mean there's just so many great people to work with i would also say that like like crew people are really generous with their time too and I'm sure you two know a lot of people who are like, oh, I do sound, but I also do art direction, but I also do, you know, design. And like when you get a project off the off the ground and, you know, people just kind of like want to pitch in. And I think that spirit is like so awesome. Um, Yeah. I mean, there's just there's a lot of enthusiasm here and also in the audiences, too. I don't like in film fests or like screening series here in town. There's so many people that just like automatically we'll go see stuff which is really cool like Mm -hmm. i'm sure it's because of the theater scene as well that you know we just have a really good audience that are you know interested right yeah so in in your history of making films have you had a favorite film or something that you project that you really wanted to dive deep with and was what's an example of that? sure yeah absolutely i so earlier this year i wrote a, a pilot for a sitcom and it's it's a really fun project i really like it and i wrote you know it's about 35 40 pages so it's like huh. would be on hbo or showtime or hulu and uh-huh. um i mean the more i revise it the more i excited i get about it and uh i mean i've written a few tv shows before and circulated them and you know gotten some interest in them but this one i just feel really strongly about and i'm like oh it's so much fun to like write it and then sketch out what the first season would theoretically be or the second and you know trying to do that like really um serialized storytelling within comedy i think is really fun and you know it's like kind of a newer form that's happening now but yeah i mean i i've been working on it for like six months and we'll we'll see where it goes i've got like parts of it that i might shoot as like a short and then also like doing like staged readings here in town for it mm-hmm. nice do you have uh, a favorite genre that you like doing like creating i think yeah i think um comedy i really enjoy drama i really enjoy uh i definitely like whatever i do i try to bring like some kind of some kind of strange element to it like science fiction or uh paranormal only in that like i think using those elements like help make the story a little bit bigger like the short i just described Mm -hmm. um you know it's kind of magical realism and i think like i find that that really just an interesting way as a storyteller just to like make the themes bigger and more obvious and um and also to try to tell stories that we haven't we haven't seen before or we haven't seen them told in this way i think like incorporating those elements Mm -hmm. um but i've definitely i mean i've written a few dramas i've written a bunch of comedies um I'm currently helping out on like a science fiction web series as a like contributing writer, yeah. which is really fun. And it's, um, it's like hard sci-fi, you know, like very speculative. And mm-hmm. I, I find that really interesting. It's not my like home base whatsoever, but, um, but I find it interesting. So yeah, sorry. That's kind of a <laughs> all over the map uh, answer. Um, I mean, I know what genres I don't, l- I mean, like, I've, I don't know if I would ever write a horror film. I mean, I, mm-hmm. I've seen some great ones that are really cool, but I don't know. It's just not my, my interest or mm-hmm. like right. my own base, like I said. Yeah. But. That makes sense. Yeah. 
Uh, have you made films like outside of Minnesota too? Or I have. Uh, I worked on one that was uh, a documentary that was filmed partly here. So I helped on the like Minnesota side of the production. But uh, it was shot in L.A., Seattle, and Portland, and it's uh, it's still in post. Um, okay. But, yeah, most of the work I've done has been here in the Twin Cities. Okay, nice. cool. Let's see. Oh, well, uh, aside from, like, uh, making films in general, what has been maybe a bigger challenge for you as far as making some of your films? You kind of brought sure. some of that up, but, yeah. Yeah, totally. I think, yeah, the challenge, I think, is, well, it's always going to be funding, and I'm sure yeah. like a lot of your guests have mm-hmm. probably called out to that. It's funding and time. And um, I mean, there's so there's so much talent here in the Twin Cities. There's a lot of production, which which I think is awesome about your podcast. It's like kind of shining a light on how much is actually being produced here, which mm-hmm. I think a lot of people just assume that there's not. And then, you know, you join like the groups on Facebook and every week there's like somebody who's like, hey, I'm making a short. I'm making a feature who can help, uh, which is awesome. Right. Um, but I think like securing funding and then like my own time. So I'm a freelance writer. I work like on contracts and I like, I'm a copywriter and I do like, oh, wow. uh, you know, like, you know, writing, writing stuff for, for companies and nonprofits and stuff, which is great, but it's also very time consuming. So I have to be like very like judicious about like, okay, when do I have time next year to make a short or when do I have time to like do rehearsals and casting and like all that stuff. And, I mean, I guess like now that we're talking about it, like money and time is like everybody's problem now, right? Like Mm -hmm. (laughs) there's not enough of either for anyone, but yeah, that that's an interesting challenge because though it's true everywhere, Mm -hmm. it seems like, um, especially in Minnesota, you have to give up one or the other. Right. Yeah, Yeah, totally. Have you found yourself kind of in a pinch where you have to get something done and it's like you can't really do some of these things you want to maybe a little bit yeah it's always going to be like a seesaw and yeah. you just have to prioritize and um i mean like when i when we made the short last year i just happened to have like my contract writing like lined up in a way that like oh i know in june it's going to be a little lighter so i can like stay up all night to help edit or i can stay up all night to like <laughs> complete the shoot to get the one shot or um and it kind of goes back and forth i mean i like this fall i've been busy enough that i haven't been able to like shoot much just because no time um and also i mean being a writer during the day like it's a finite thing and it's like the at the end of the day you're just like kind of mm-hmm. drained of your res- mental resources that's interesting because i i wonder about like people who do commercials around town mm-hmm. and or for camera or whatever. And I wonder, like, I I do that, like, semi-regularly. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of like, I don't know if I have enough to, like, focus on a creative project sometimes. Yeah. yeah. Totally. I think, I mean, I, um, I, run, I run into that, too. And I think, like, uh, having outlines and having, like, detailed notes for whatever project you're working on on the side or if you've got a couple in the in the works, like just having it all written out as much as possible so you can like find your way back, you know, like, like, Oh, I know I'm going to be busy for this amount of hours this week, but I know that on Saturday I'll have four hours. So like, what's the best use of my time? Like, okay, I need to adjust this character or I need to like send 50 emails to people about like who can do this when we're going to shoot in a couple months, that kind of thing. Yeah. And as you mentioned, we like sleep. So it's kind of one of those things. (laughs) Yeah. No, totally. (laughs) I need yeah, to go you have to, to bed. Be, yeah, you have to be ready to sacrifice your your precious sleep sometimes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Is there a role that you maybe haven't taken on on a film set that you're kind of itching to or someday you'd like to give it a shot? See what it's like? Sure. Yeah, I um I would love to like second direct at some point. Mm-hmm. I think that would be really cool and um I've spent some time on sets, but uh, you can never spend enough. Like there's always a learning experience. So I would love to like, just kind of like be the second or third person on a, on a shoot and just like help them with certain things, but mostly just like contribute and consult and just be there to, to assist whatever they need kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that'd be really cool. Yeah. Awesome. Well, is, is there something that you do look forward to the most, like when you start a new project? Yeah. I love, I love the brainstorming part. I think that's like the, my writing background, just like, I love kind of, uh, putting together all, all the themes I want to talk about or like the characters I want to explore. And, um, you know, if like a couple jokes occur to me, like, okay, write those down. And I I just love when everything's really abstract and it could like be anything. 
Um, and then like, you know, you get closer to production and you start like meeting with other people like producers. And I love that part of it too. The like, let's talk about what this means or like, it, you know, it, the main character, like what are they, what's their position before this film starts and just kind of getting like the nitty gritty of like story mechanics, mm -hmm. you know, or like, Oh, the best friend, like they would never say that because of this and this. And like, if they say that, then that throws off this thing later, you know, like, hmm. I mean, it's kind of, it's kind of nerdy, but I really like getting into those really, really granular conversations about like story and like character and stuff. I just, mm -hmm. right. I don't know. It's just kind of like the dream of like sitting around with like really good friends and like getting into heated discussions about, you know, things that are ultimately not that important, but yeah. in the moment, you know, you get really like energized from that. <laughs> right. And having conversations with different, well, maybe departments or yeah, totally of like, what is a more creative shot than maybe what you had thought of? Absolutely. Yeah. And then it was like, sometimes it's like, you don't want to let go of your idea, but mm -hmm. at the same time it's like, yeah. Yeah. You have to be flexible. And if, I mean, a good idea is a good idea, no matter who has it. And you just have sure. to like, try to get to the point where everybody's contributing. And um, I mean, yeah, along those lines, like when you're working with really talented actors, like that's the best when you've like written something and then they perform it and then they do it better than you had in your mind. And you're like, awesome. Now, now it's like real and it works. Like mm -hmm. before it was just like, you know, half of the equation. Do you find that to be a challenge as a writer that like you have an idea like the vision is kind of in your mind and you put it on the paper yeah. on the page and then someone interprets it differently. Sometimes, I don't know, is that like going off, like almost like if you talk about a show, like a Bible, like you don't right. go, your character doesn't go beyond this point or something. Yeah, totally. Yeah. yeah I think it, I think it can get a little tricky. Um, I think usually it's a, for me, it's like, as long as we agree on what the tone is, hmm. then anything after that is, is up for grabs and we can talk about it, you know, like, and an actor, I think, will always bring more to it than you envisioned, which is great. And um, you just have to, like, pay attention to that and honor it. And everyone has a space to contribute. But, I mean, I think, like, tonally, that's the most important thing. Like, especially if, you know, you're writing something that's comedic. If someone is, like, maybe acting in a certain style that, like, it's like, no, that's not really the tone of this piece. You know, like, um, maybe more of a sitcom-y or bigger style then you have to be like, okay, let's just all like kind of discuss like what the objective here is. Like we're going for like something that's more natural and hopefully it's funny because of the dialogue or like the rhythm, but not the like really big movement, I guess. But I mean, right. once you, I, you know, once you like get people on that same page, then, then everything flows after that, I think. Sure. And do you, <laughs> I don't want to make this a problem for your sets but do you welcome that type of feedback or how, how do you approach that sure. with actors or yeah you know? totally totally i mean i think it's all a conversation and hopefully we've figured it out before we shoot um hopefully like, <laughs> you don't get the ed norton treatment where he asks you a hundred questions <laughs> right, totally, before totally. yeah and then he like go lives as that person out in the world like yeah. for a year and then comes back and like okay now i got it um <laughs> or i don't know what his process is i shouldn't speculate uh well he asks like tons of questions yeah yeah yeah. Well, hey, if that, I mean, he's a great actor, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, uh, do you find, like, since you kind of mentioned, like, how many different roles you take on when making films, do you find yourself doing that often, and how many roles or different hats do you wear normally, or? Yeah, I think it, I think it varies project by project. Um, I think, like, some amount of being a producer is always going to be there, just because that's kind of a, an important role that like is a catch all and making sure everything's on track. That's just going to be part of it. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I've definitely f just applied my vision or whatever towards a lot of different parts of it. I think as a director, you have to, um, I mean, I can say that like writing and directing are both like my favorite and, you know, to work with other people who like have all that other stuff handled is awesome. Um, like cinematography, I really respect and like, I'm also like a photographer in my, as a hobby, but I don't understand cinematography like whatsoever. Like I'm in like pre pre production on a short for next year and like talking to a DP and he's, you know, we were like emailing about like focal lengths the other day. And I was like, <laughs> that's so awesome that you understand that. I, <laughs> it's like, it's Greek uh, to me, but, right. that, but that's, you know, but I so much respect for people who like know their technical stuff. Yeah. Do you prefer to wear just a few hats or many hats? What's I think I your... prefer to wear a few. Yeah, I yeah. think like 
I'm most comfortable as a writer and then second to that as a director. And like, those are, I think where I feel if I can just focus on those two on a project, then I think everyone will be, it'll be better. Yes. <laughs> you know, like yes. better people, people are better at doing other stuff. They should just be doing their thing and I can, you know, stay in my, my part of it. Right. Yeah. You find that, um, in Minnesota, I think everyone, like you mentioned, does many mm-hmm. different things. And then, um, it, when it comes time, it's almost like too many cooks in the kitchen sometimes. Right. Yeah. Uh, how do you deal with maybe situations like that or have you? Uh, a little bit. I think I've been lucky that uh, the projects I've worked on, people were, you know, kind of focused towards the common goal. Um, yeah. And I think, I mean, not to sound like too much of like an optimist, but like, <laughs> or whatever, but like, I think like if everyone does have the goal in mind of like, let's just make the, make this thing the best it can be. Sure then hopefully like it just kind of organizes itself accordingly or people organize themselves. And I mean, if there's a disagreement, we're all adults. It's like, that's when you have conversations and you listen to feedback and you, you know, act accordingly. And, you know, it has to be like a, a friendly place and conversation. Um, yeah. I mean, it's, and it's really like early in the project, just making sure people are, they understand what it's, what it's hopefully going to be. And they understand like, okay, this is how I'll be contributing. Um, right. But yeah, I mean, it's, um, it's always a balancing act, I think. Hmm. Okay. Well, I, I think, um, it makes sense what you said about keeping things balanced within a production. Um, do you find, have you ever had challenges where like things don't really go your way? You know, do you have any stories about that or where you had to be creative in the moment to you know, yeah. make something work? Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, I think there's always gonna be technical issues like sound, Mm -hmm. you know, where you're in a space, um, like the short last year we filmed at a diner and we, you know, we got the space after they'd closed for the night, which is really great. So you can just kind of like make the space your own, Yeah, you know, stuff is always going to come up when you're shooting on location. So like the air conditioner kept clicking on (laughs) or like the cooler. So like, okay, who do we call to figure out how to unplug or if it's okay to unplug the cooler and, you know, just like stuff that everybody deals with when they're kind of like on a quick time crunch on a, on a movie. But, um, you know, you, you do what you can. I mean, I think that's like problem solving is half of what filmmaking is. Right. Um, or you like a short that I, I wrote a couple years ago, uh, you know, the, the dialogue in like the, the location had changed. So the dialogue had to be adjusted and we had to do that kind of on set, you know, like, okay, now the conversation's different because right. he's not pointing to a skyscraper in the distance. He's pointing to like the room across the hall. So like, does he like, how can we still pull a joke out of that? Like, how can we still, you know, keep, keep the same tone of what we were trying to do, but now it's like the situation's different, you know, like, and in that case it was like, I mean, I mentioned that because like the main character's like status in the world was like part of the plot. So the fact that he's like no longer in a skyscraper, but he's in a room, it's like, oh, I guess that changes the arithmetic for the character. Do you ever run into issues with things like that with um, the actors on your projects? Like where maybe you're saying, okay, we have to change this one way. And they're saying, I think we should really do something else. Like I don't, I'm not, that's not how my flow goes. Like, how do you go about that? Totally. I think um, it hasn't really been a problem or hasn't really, you know, been that big of an issue. I think Mm -hmm. in the moment, Um, I think it helps that uh, there's always a little bit of downtime when you're shooting. So like, you know, you set all the equipment up and you like talk to the extras and like you secure a lot of stuff. And hopefully in that time, you'll have a minute to like talk to the actors and say, okay, this has changed these things on the script are different. If you just like work with that for a little while and like internalize it so that when we shoot in 45 minutes, you know, we're cool. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't know. It's, I mean, talking to people as much as you can and keeping everybody updated, hopefully alleviate some of that. So good communication. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. I think you have to have like a pretty high emotional intelligence or whatever. Like, (laughs) and I don't know if I do, but um, (laughs) I'm constantly talking. So hopefully somewhere in there, like, (laughs) Uh, good. Someone's listening. Comes out. Yeah, totally. <laughs> totally. There's connections made, even yeah. if it's fleeting. But right. Cool. Well, um, I know that uh, when you when you talk about filming in a diner scene or something like that, um, I, I guess what is it? 
easier to find a location like that for yourself or uh, how do you go about doing that for like scouting locations and things like I that? I think it's, yeah, it's different based on the project. Um, mostly like a producer or someone else associated with the project, you know, it'll be like an early meeting of like, okay, what are the locations we'll need? If we can't get them, how do we re- rewrite the script around that? And then, you know, a producer or someone else will, I'll work with them to like, okay, what are the steps to look, you know, locate right. I mean, it's all like so much of filmmaking is like just building these massive spreadsheets of like one tab per scene or one tab <laughs> per location. And like, yeah. okay, we need a diner. Who do we know who is a diner? Like ask your friends on Facebook, who do they know? And like, just narrow it down. And then once you've locked it in, then proceed. Um, or if you can't get a diner, then, you know, how do you rewrite the scene so that now it's on a park bench or now it's in a coffee shop or, I mean, if like the easiest thing, you know, the easiest way to make a movie is like, I'm going to shoot the whole thing in my own house because I don't need to like secure anything and I know where all the angles are and, right. um, which, yeah, I mean, if you, if someone can make a movie just in their own house and it looks cool and it like works, then that's awesome. Right. But have you ever run into like a location falling through that you had thought that was secured previously? Yeah. I'm trying to think. Um, I mean, I made, I made a bunch of shorts a while ago, the ones I mentioned earlier about, mm-hmm. you know, they never really saw the light of day. It was just more of an exercise. And um, I think we, we were going to shoot in a friend's house and they were going to be like out of town that weekend. Mm-hmm. So we had to like do it on the sidewalk basically. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, which is like not ideal. It was like winter and windy and like, uh, you yeah. know, all that, all that stuff that you can't control. But it was like, mm-hmm. okay, well, I know we, we're filming it on Saturday. So yeah, <laughs> do, the, do the best we can. But, right. Yeah. Cause kind of made it work. You're yeah. right. Cause you, you have actors that you schedule for a certain time and then your location or whatever is only good for a certain amount of time. Right. Maybe. Yeah. 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 And it's always, I mean, that's the, that's your balance. That that's the balance. Yeah, yeah, totally. And that's like, it's like the fun, but also kind of the terror of like filmmaking of like, all right, got to be fast on my feet and we got to figure this out. But then there's always like, maybe it's not going to come together and we have to wait two months to like get the next shot or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. like, yeah, it's, yeah. it's a gamble for sure. So don't plan on filming in fall or spring because they won't happen the way you yeah. think they're oh, going to yes. happen. <laughs> yes, totally. Also don't, uh, like I've tried to film scenes that take place over the course of an early evening in tonight, you know, so you get the like sunset mm-hmm. or like, you know, dusk light. Uh, that's dusk, right? Dusk is the one at the end of the day. That's not before. It's dawn and dusk. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cross that out. <laughs> Take that out. <laughs> I'm not smart. Um, but yeah, like the idea of like, okay, we're going to start this scene and it's going to be very natural. We're going to like feel the sunlight trickle out. And, but then it's like, oh wait, now the shots are really hard to line up when you're editing because like the light keeps changing. Yeah. Yeah. And, like it's becoming more like blue and like, yeah, it's definitely like, that's a lesson <laughs> like film it during the day or film it during the night don't mess around with like the transitional time. Cause it's like, mm-hmm. it's a headache. Yeah. But they're also like some of the best times of the year to film. That look right. Amazing. Yeah, totally. But sometimes you only get one shot at right. it. Right. That's the thing. Yeah. I mean like magic hour. Yeah. Like to shoot outside at magic hour is like ideal. So right. like have everything lined up, but even then like do it outside. So you maximize that. Yeah. And then, cause you don't really get, I don't, you know, you don't get as much like benefit from it if it's an interior, mm-hmm. even with windows, but yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, Peter, I, I was curious about your, um, festival experience actually. Mm-hmm. Do you, um, what have you found in your travels, I guess, going to different various festivals sure. and your experiences, I guess. Yeah. I think, uh, going to festivals is just a great way to connect with other filmmakers. Um, I think like, Cause you meet, you meet people who are like at your level or like just a, ahead of you or a little, you know, like at different stages in their career. And it's, you always meet people who are like enthusiastic cause they're like, sweet, I'm in this festival. I'm like, you know, I'm getting myself out there. I'm getting my work out there. And, um, yeah, I mean, I think like every, every festival I've been to, I've met at least one person who I've maintained contact with, uh, which Great. is really fun. Like I, I was at the Portland film festival last year and I met like, you know, you just like go to these mixers and you talk to people and you find yourself at a table with like four really cool people who are doing interesting things. And it's like, okay, of course we're going to like stay in touch. And you know, a few of them I've like 
you know, we've traded scripts and like giving each other notes or, um, you know, if they've like, they completed a feature. So now like we can talk about that or like, I mean, like if they've completed it, there's like not much, you know, insight you can give other than just be like super supportive and like tell people about it. And, uh, I don't know. Yeah. So I mean, like that's a long way of saying, I guess, like it's a really great way to share work with people and, um, you know, the more allies you have, the better and the more people you have to like share a draft with or, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this. Does that sound crazy? Or, you know, I've written this. Do you know someone who might be interested in reading it also? You know, it's all about like networking and like supporting other people. Um, and it's also really, um, I mean, you know, like I mentioned about like the New York screenings that we did for the short last year, it is really cool to see it, you know, see your short or whatever you're working on with new eyes, like to be in the theater and like, oh, people are, people are laughing at that. Awesome. Or people are like gasping, you know, or like, like we did had screening for it and, you know, someone who didn't know me or who I, you know, like sitting right next to her in a screening and she was like, oh no, you know, when there's like a, like a dramatic turn in the story. <laughs> and like, that's just so great. Like as a, as a storyteller, you hope to have people emotionally invested in what you're doing. And then when it right. like elicits a reaction, it's just like, thank you so much for like allowing me to have this time and space. Like, I don't know. It's a very, it's very fulfilling. Right. Um, have you been back to some of those festivals since or, uh, I'm trying to think. Um, yeah, I mean, I've, you know, like the twin cities film fest, I've, uh, been to a few times and, um, Minneapolis, St. Paul a few times. And, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's really, they're just great environments. Um, and I also like, like it, uh, Austin Film Festival, which I went to a few years ago. Oh, wow. That one is really cool and fun um, because it's, like, known as, like, the Writers Festival. So yep. they do a lot of programming. And so you get to, like, sit in on, like, like lectures and presentations of, like, these, like, very famous – famous within the writing world um, and, like, get to talk to them afterwards or, like, oh, I'm going to, like, talk to the guy who's written, like, four X-Men movies and just, like – nerd out about stuff with him or like yeah i don't know it's like they're really accessible at those things which is really cool just to like get a sense of who they are as people you know like i'm sure you're the same way where like you admire someone's work and but you're like what are they like as a person are they mm -hmm. cool are they open are they personable or are they like you know like what's their energy like and it's just kind of i don't know it's like gratifying to know that like oh successful people are also cool like <laughs> that's nice like i don't know it's it's good vibes for sure have you, uh, before you started getting into festivals, did you find it difficult to actually get your films in sometimes or has that ever been a challenge for you? Or Yeah, it, it's, it comes and goes. I think like some projects have done well, some not as well. And, you know, you just kind of like, you make something and you send it to a lot of places and not all of them are going to be excited and some of them will be and you just have to like, you know, um, not hedge your bets, I guess, but just be like, open to that part of the process and not, not get too bummed out. If like, you know, there's like one film festival you want to get into, but you don't, but you know, it's like, well, there'll be another one that will be excited. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's definitely like, I think there's a momentum there. I think there's like, there's the hierarchy of film festivals with like, right. you know, Sundance and Toronto and a few others like at the very top. And that's the like, or con, um, mm -hmm. you know, yeah, someday, <laughs> like that would, be, that would be incredible to like be in that echelon at some point. But right. you know, so I think like hopefully you just like everything you work on, you hope to get to that point eventually. And but it's like you can only go a couple steps at a time. Like you, but you just have to have the goal out right. there eventually. Right. What is your? What would be your ideal festival? Probably Toronto. I think Toronto. I okay. I think like just. I think it's just in the last couple of years it, and I'm no expert on the festival circuit by any means, but um, it seems in the last few years, like movies play well at Toronto and then they go on to become Oscar contenders or, you know, people show something at Toronto and then they get, you know, they get staffed on a show or, you know, like it's like makes you very legitimate. I think, I mean, Sundance also and Tribeca and right. um, Austin in a lot of ways too, but, yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think every it shifts every year, it seems. Again, I'm not an expert, but yeah, I don't know. I think Toronto is the one that just keeps sticking in my mind for some reason. That's cool. But yeah, I don't know. Fingers crossed someday. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Got to make a film for Toronto. Yeah. So. <laughs> 
Um, have you? Well, ha- well, I guess the real question has you. Have you been to a Toronto Film Festival? I have not. Okay, no. I've just I've just read the reporting on it. I've <laughs> never been to the dance. You should go. You should go. Have you been? I haven't, but yeah. uh, I know many people who have. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It's a cool city too, right? Like Toronto is. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So cool. at least just go for that. Just at yeah. least to be a tourist. And, totally. Like run and, into Drake oh, or whatever. A, like yeah. <laughs> see see what's up. There's a festival <laughs> going on too. I'll see some movies, I guess. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> While I'm in town. Yeah. So Peter, since you do identify as I believe a queer filmmaker, yep. right? Yeah, that's right. Okay. Yeah, I'm a gay gay man. Okay. <laughs> what. Uh, what what part of that type of queer filming do you, are you into or what you yeah know? totally yeah well yeah that's i mean that's something i'm i've been trying to kind of figure out the last couple of years with my work and um because i've my films or my writing has always had like some queer element to it but uh like i wrote like a drama feature like drama about like a, a gay band having like an identity crisis um and apart from that one, it hasn't been a huge part of what I've worked on. It's just been kind of a side element and more and more I've been thinking about like expressing that more fully. And also, um, just this notion of like, are we at a point with queer culture that we could have a queer, you know, love story that has science fiction elements to it? Or could we have like a queer story that also is magical realism or, you know, like having like multiple dimensions to it. And it feels like we are at that point. And I mean, this is something I've been like thinking about for the past year or so. And randomly, like I'm working on a couple projects for other people that very much plug into that. Like I'm, I'm currently writing, there's a director in town. He and I have worked on some stuff before and he's um, putting, he's in pre-production on a short that I'm helping him rewrite basically. And it is a gay love story that has like paranormal elements to it. Um, which is really cool. And just, it's just like serendipity that this is like something I've been thinking about and like, okay, how would I approach it? Like, how would I write that? And then, you know, a couple months after I was like starting to think about that, he emailed me out of the blue and was like, Hey Pete, do you want to like help me work on this thing? Um, which is really fun. And it's really an interesting conversation to have just like if the character main characters are queer, like how much of that is, do we have to talk about, are we at a point where we don't need to talk about it? Or like if we do, what are the, like the main issues that we're, you know, it just, it just gets really uh, complicated, but in a good way, like it's, it's not a deterrent to the narrative. I don't think. Um, Yeah. It's a different way of expressing something that's been expressed. Like you see in like the Oscars, you've mm -hmm. seen moonlight. um, Yeah. um, This last year, call me by your name. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, totally. Yeah, so like it's obviously very prominent and exists, but it's just like yeah. you don't, I don't I don't see like a sci-fi thriller type of thing. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you I think you see a lot of genre uh like TV shows and movies that will like have a queer character right. mm-hmm. like on right. the sidelines or part of the main cast, but it's not like a personal story about their life as a queer person and then this other like very large interesting thing happens. Mm-hmm. Um so yeah, I mean that's like part of the discussion now is like how do we incorporate those elements and you know like are we at the point where you can just say like he's a gay man and then you don't have to talk about it anymore or like but then it's like okay what are what is the point of the story then like what are we getting at and how mm-hmm. does like the person's identity inform it um I don't know yeah it's a really it's an interesting and it's all kind of abstract the way I guess I'm talking about it now but um I mean, yeah, I'm, I'm, we're working on that project. I've also, I'm starting on a pre-production of a short that I'd like to shoot next year and the main character is queer. And then, um, yeah, there's another project I might help out on next year that also is a queer science fiction <laughs> piece. So like, I don't, it's like, you, you know, you th- you spend a lot of time mulling these things over and then all of a sudden they just kind of like come to fruition, which mm-hmm. is kind of right. strange, but. And it's interesting the way with filmmaking, you can represent things that, in past they've had to do it in ways where you can't come out and say it, Mm -hmm. but you can show it in a different way. Like this, maybe this monster represents something that's really going on in their lives or something, you know, totally that type of thing. Totally. Yeah. Yeah, totally. And I think like there's, there's so many ways to approach a film in a story, like a very realistic one where like the, the characters are reacting as, realistically as possible you know or does it take place in a stylized universe where like a satire or Mm -hmm. um or you know like a 
uh, science fiction that's kind of like a parallel dimension. Like they they're used to these giant crazy things happening, and you like tr- trying to find the right tone is is part of the challenge. And I mean, I I'm usually drawn to things that are more realistic, like baseline. This is how a normal person would react. They're entering this from the normal world, and then when things start to get weird, then they have to like adjust or whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, so certainly like telling stories from a realistic perspective, having a queer protagonist it does you know it pulls other issues in automatically right that's that's kind of the juggling act and there's a built-in audience for that because you have like yeah platforms like logo and Mm -hmm. uh, reverie i think is one yeah i think so yeah uh i had a friend who had a short or a feature film on there so it was like she was obviously yeah a lesbian character so Mm -hmm. it was very very nice to see like yeah. a friend that has a story, but it was action oriented. So it wasn't mm-hmm. just a love story, but it right. kind of was, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. And there's, there's a couple film festivals also that are like queer focused, mm-hmm. which is really nice. And, um, I haven't really like interacted much with them, but you know, hopefully the short I'm, I'm going to write and direct this coming year myself. will you know, that'll be part of our like distribution <laughs> approach. Right. will be like targeting those or, and there's one in town, I think, Out Film Festival, I think, is one of them here. So, yeah. Um, not too familiar with it, but yeah. Mm-hmm. So, Peter, what's next for you, though? Sure. Yeah, well, I, I've probably already alluded to the... Uh, <laughs> Other than that, yeah, yeah, yeah sure, sci-fi. Totally. <laughs> yeah, so I... Um, yeah, the, the shorts I mentioned, I also... The sitcom that I wrote, I'm... Mm-hmm hoping to circulate it more this coming year and um, you should build a studio here or rent well, prints <laughs> no i know right i mean this is this is the other thing that i was kind of hoping we would like circle around to is like i i mean for myself i my goal at this point is to like i want to make a few more shorts i want to like get traction with my sitcom and then in a couple of years i would love to write and direct a feature here and like people such as yourself who've done that like i think that is amazing and i i would love it if the Twin Cities had a production company that was like a standing building that was like making one or two independent films a year. And I mean, this is something that like I've talked to with people in Austin, uh, like people that I've met who are filmmakers in Vancouver and like just getting a sense of what those cities are like and like how much infrastructure exists. Um, I don't like, there's no reason why the Twin Cities shouldn't have that also. And like, and it kind of, you know, raises all boats, you know, the tide that rises all boats, like, um yeah i think that would be amazing that's my that's my goal like within five years but wow who knows i mean hopefully when if i listen to this episode in five years i'll I'll be like yeah it happened yeah (laughs) we did it or i won't be like oh yeah that's still a good idea like hopefully (laughs) hopefully i'll we'll be at that point but yeah there are obviously a lot of studios around town normally used for commercial right but like acme is one Mm and minneapolis and then there's uh Cinequipped, I guess they have stages. Yeah. 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 Yeah, And I don't know. I mean, it's, there's so many factors. Again, the funding is an issue and I mean, I'm not an expert on all this by any means. I know that like in Austin, which is, you know, roughly the same size as the Twin Cities, maybe we're a little bit bigger, like Austin, Texas, they, you know, they've got Robert Rodriguez and they've got Richard Linklater who made their names and they're like, they're like respected movies elsewhere and then came back and Mm -hmm. we're like, okay, I want a production company here. So we need like someone to leave the Twin Cities, <laughs> make a lot of money and, and uh, you know, get that respect and then be like, okay, I'm moving home and we're building a building and, you know. Wouldn't it be nice if the Coens just came home one day, you know, and I, built, yeah. did something? Yeah. They're, they're brilliant. Yeah. I, I just hope they keep making movies, whatever they, whatever, right. wherever yeah. they do it, just keep making amazing films. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, what do you want people to remember most about you and your work? Uh, let's see. I think, um, I hope people don't think I wasted their time. <laughs> like <laughs> I hope that they, if they've interacted with me or my work, they think like, or my work, I guess like, Oh, I've never seen a, a story told that way. Or I've never seen a character go through that circumstance. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, you know, I also like hope that people think of me as someone who's like supportive of other people, you know, like, I like if I have a friend who's working on a project, I'll often be like, okay, send me a draft or like, I want to help. I like, let me know, like, let's get coffee and like, tell me the story and I'll help you if I can like fine tune it or give you insight. But yeah, I don't know. I hope like 
being a supportive person in general because that's what we're all here to do is like make cool stuff and help each other do it mm -hmm. again maybe i sound like a total like optimistic like <laughs> good, um, yeah i don't know i hope so i mean mm -hmm. we all we all hope that our work is going to be like received and enjoyed so right, right. yeah you got to help other people get there too for sure all right well where can people find you and contact you if they sure. want to work with you and see your work? Yeah, totally. That. So I have a website, uh, petergroinum.com. So my name, Peter, and then my last name, which is G-R-O-Y-N is in Nancy, O-M is in Mary, Groinum. Mm -hmm. um, so I've got my website, and then I'm also like pretty active on Instagram with my photography, which is at P. Groinum uh, on Instagram. So nice. great. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for oh, taking you. the it's time and, thank you. and talking with us today. Yeah, it was wonderful meeting you. You too. Thanks so much. Yeah. And see you guys in two weeks here on Film in Minnesota. Yeah.